For today's episode, I have compiled 40 of my best Christmas DIYs. So sit back, relax, or craft right along with me. But let's get started on our first Christmas DIY. I found this Mary sign on Pottery Barn that was so beautiful. It had kind of red shiplap and it had Mary with a lit up marquee sign. It was beautiful and it was $500. <laughs> way out of my budget, but I knew with a little elbow grease, I could do that for pennies on the dollar and possibly free. So stay tuned for how I may or may not have pulled that off. <laughs> In order to do this, the first thing I did is I went into Cricut Design Studio to design my lettering and I looked at the dimensions. I tried to find a font that I felt was very similar to the font that they used, which I ended up using to Homa. And then I just laid it all out. I made sure to put kind of like a rectangle behind it and I even made it red to help me visualize what it might look like. So then once I had my lettering all laid out how I wanted it to, I knew that I could make my life even easier by putting all of the holes already in our design. This will help in our construction so much laying things out. It will totally simplify things. And I wanted to start here because this kind of we're going to be cutting this out on heavy chipboard and I knew that this cutting process would take a little bit of time and then we could go start on some other stuff while this was cutting. We are going to cut this out on my Cricut Maker. You could do it on the Cricut Maker 3, but it does need to be one of their Maker products and this is, will give you the capability of cutting it out on a wood product or in my case what I ended up using was chipboard. You're going to want to make sure you switch out the blade to a knife blade one specific for cutting wood and you just open that up, slip it in, shut it, and it's good to go. And then you hit cut and you will see that it will want to go through 24 passes. I think they just do that just to be safe, but I would keep an eye on it because depending on how sharp your blade is, mine cut anywhere from eight passes to 12 passes. You know, when it was nice and fresh and sharp, it was like eight and by the end it was closer to 12. So once it's cut through, you don't wanna keep running it through. And you'll notice as it's cutting that I tape down all of my edges in blue painter's tape because it really needs to stick into place. You don't want it budging at all and it is kind of a thick product so that tape really helps hold it in place. Okay, so we've got all of our lettering sorted out, but now what about that shiplap? About this time last year, I was like up to my eyeballs in putting in a whole fireplace wall that I really wanted done for Christmas time. From that wall, I had a whole bunch of approximately two foot cutoffs from my shiplap that have just been kicking around for about a year. <laughs> in my scrap pile. And the original sign was a little bit bigger than that, so I ended up scaling it back a touch, but I did seven 25 inch long sections of this shiplap. On the bottom, we didn't want that little groove piece showing. And I had one that was kind of a little bit damaged already, so I just ran that through my table saw. If you don't have a table saw, you could use a jigsaw, a circular saw, use whatever you have on hand. Just kind of cut that bottom piece off. There we go, we have all of our pieces they are a little rough for wear they do not look beautiful they got like staining on them they're ugly <laughs> but they're gonna be beautiful I promise but now how do we attach them so then I went into my scrap pile and I'm like well what can I attach these two so I had these two strips and they they're mismatched they're not even the same thing but I knew once it was painted you wouldn't be able to tell so they were like uh, one by twos and I put a little bit of wood glue on them and then I attached them to the back using some nails. And then I, for added assurance, I did end up flipping it over and adding some more nails on the front side and then putting that all out. But you just wanna make sure that they are securely fastened on either side and that is what's gonna hold all of that shiplap together so it doesn't like break into a million pieces. So, and then we're, I'm gonna let that wood glue dry a bit. Then we're gonna go get our chipboard Mary letters. <laughs> and then we are going to lay them out onto our sign to get all of the spacing right. And then we're gonna take a pencil and kind of mark each one of those holes. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take a wood boring bit 
that's a mouthful, <laughs> but it's a little attachment that you attach to your drill and three quarters inch. And you just drill those holes. Then we're gonna take it inside and we are going to use some Waverly Red Lacquer Chalk Paint. I found that this color is very close to the version on Pottery Barn and we do two good coats of this chalk paint and let that dry. And then I take our Merry Letters and I start by painting it out in a white chalk paint. We take some Gorilla Glue as well as some hot glue for that instant stick and we layer that on really good and then we line it up with the holes that we already pre-drilled right so it keeps it nice and neat and clean and then we just do this on all of the letters so they should line up you glue them and you use those as the guide and then we're going to let that sit for a second and then if you need to do any touch-up paint here or there you can totally do that before we do anything else we are going to attach some hooks to hang it if you want to so i just use some d-ring hooks just screwed them into place up near the top and then you have a way to hang it on your wall then we're going to take some string lights I had these in my stash already, so I didn't have to buy them, but they're like the round globe looking ones that are kind of big. I would say one to two inches. I don't know, they're, they're pretty good size. We're gonna unscrew all of the light bulbs, right? And then we are going to push the string lights through each one of the holes. Now there's, you'll need one that has 30 lights on it. Then we're gonna flip it over and then we're gonna screw in all of our light bulbs. How easy is that, right? Now, I didn't end up doing anything to kind of finish off the back. You could take some staples and kind of staple down the string lights, but I just didn't really want to because I, if I need to adjust anything or move anything or remove it for something else in the future, ours is a tiny bit different than Pottery Barn's version. Okay, so my letters ended up being a little bit bigger than the inspiration piece. I like it better, I'm gonna be honest with you. I like the bigger letters. I think mine looks so much like the inspiration one. I'm a little partial to mine because it was so much cheaper. Mine literally didn't cost me anything because I used everything in my stash, but that's not realistic. So I'm gonna give you a realistic number. I think if you went out and bought everything that you needed for this and you had all of the tools and all of the equipment already, you would be looking at about $40. Remember the inspiration piece was $500 and ours was $40. That is less than 10% of the original cost. I love how this turned out. I am totally obsessed with this. I. Love the sign, it's so cute. Okay, so for the next dupe, it is going to be so easy because I've done all the work for you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I've designed this free image for you. I will link it in the description box below. So all you're gonna need to do is go to this file, put it in, cut it out. Then we're gonna weed it and then put on our transfer tape. I got these coasters in the Target Dollar spot for three dollars so all you need is kind of like a white or an off-white tile coaster these were beautiful white tile ones they ended up being like one dollar a piece and then we just put our decal on the top of the coaster and that's it like seriously it's that easy they are so cute and so close in look to our inspiration piece now the inspiration one was $15 and that doesn't include shipping or anything like that with shipping and everything it will definitely be over 20 bucks but we'll just call it $15. I'm gonna call mine $5 just because our coasters were $1 a piece and then a little bit for vinyl for all four of them. Ours, I think are nicer. I do. <laughs> Call me crazy. You can call me crazy in the comment section, but you'll have to let me know what you think. I had rather have these tile versions versus cork versions, and I'd definitely rather pay $5 versus $15 to $20. <laughs> well, how do you think I did with this dupe? Let me know. So for our next Christmas Pottery Barn knockoff, I am knocking off these beautiful tea towels. And now 
you, you're kind of seeing a theme here. There's a huge collection at Pottery Barn right now of all of this stuff. And honestly, we could have done a ton. <laughs> and they all coordinate. In fact, I have some pillows from a Christmas bedroom a little while back that would totally go with this set. So maybe I'll have to do like a little Christmas love in my bedroom. We'll see. So for our next one, we're going to be knocking off these little tea towels. And so I did, again, all the work for you. I went into Cricut Design Studio. I actually used a couple of different fonts here um, because there were a few different fonts it looked like it used in the inspiration one. And I wrote the piece, I wrote the bright, I wrote the merry, and I kind of just followed visually what it looked like to me. And then I added some kind of swirly lines. And then I also added like a little ribbon strip at the bottom near the edge. So I just kind of played around with this. So once I got that all designed, make sure you reverse it on mirror image. I cut it out on some everyday iron-on in this kind of red color. Then of course we weed it and I just, I don't know, I love weeding, especially a heat transfer vinyl. It's just so satisfying to peel it back. Once we got that done, we set that aside. Now I found this flower sack towel at Dollar Tree, but it was too big, but I needed two towels. So I looked at the dimensions and I'm like, you know what? It will work if, to cut it down the middle. So you don't need to do this, but it will save you a lot of money. So I cut it down the middle. And then I just zigzagged the edges and folded them over and sewed it down on that seam. Now our one $1 towel is two, so making them 50 cents each. So now we have the two towels. I press them out really good. They look ready to go. Now it's time to put it on our towels and I lay it out on our pressing pad and I decide to put parchment paper underneath it because it's a little gauzy. I was a little unsure if it would like stick through or what would happen. Everything ended up being okay. So I lay out how I want it on the towel and then I noticed that um, my vinyl was a little bit too big. So I just took some scissors and cut it down. And then I pressed it at 330 degrees for 40 seconds in all of the different sections. You can see like it didn't cover it all in one fell swoop. And then we flipped it over and I did it on the back 20 seconds in each section. And then we flipped it back over and peeled it back and Ta-da! <laughs> it looked amazing. And then I quickly repeated this process for the second tea towel in the set, which was just the merry one. And that's it. Like, honestly, so cute, right? So you can see here that my font is a little bit big. <laughs> you don't get the entire word on it. I think it's super cute. I love how this turned out. It doesn't matter to me that it's a little bit larger than the original Pottery Barn version. It really echoes the same sentiment and ours was so much cheaper. Okay, so we used a lot of heat transfer vinyl on this one. So it ended up being about $10 total for our version versus $30 for theirs. Again, not including shipping and all of those other fees that you would expect to pay. I think these are super adorable. I think that they would make a really cute gift. You could even put like all three of these together and give it as a gift. It would be adorable. Made with love, right? Or you can just keep them for yourself because they're super cute. Okay, so on all of our DIYs, we saved like $500 from the original cost. So that's a ton of money. We are gonna be doing a letters to Santa mailbox. For this, we need to go outside. I love making Christmas DIYs. We are going to get a little bit powerful. And what that means is we are gonna be using some power tools, but don't be intimidated because this is something that you can totally do. I found this at Walmart recently. The color's not gonna work for my decor, but it is really cute. And I thought that we could elevate this into something a little bit more than this. If you watch my channel for a while, you know that I love these outdoor decking spindles that they sell at Lowe's. So what I was thinking is, is that we could mount this on top, but this top portion's kind of big and tall, so we're gonna cut that down a little bit. We're gonna use a miter saw. You can use whatever kind of saw that you have access to. Even if it's a hand saw, you will get a better workout if you do it by hand, that's for sure. I'm not gonna do any measurements today. I probably should, but I'm just gonna be kind of eyeballing it how it looks good to me. The first thing we're gonna do is put on some safety glasses to protect our eyes. If you wanna use earplugs, 
earplugs and a face mask, I would definitely recommend that. Gloves, protect yourself to the level that you're, you feel comfortable with, but you wanna be able to still move. So no Christmas story outfits. <laughs> So that wasn't too hard. We still have all of our fingers, so we're good. That is the only cut other than if you don't have a scrap piece of wood, then you might wanna cut down one more cut for this. The rest is gonna be using a drill, so this is gonna be easy peasy. If you haven't worked with power tools before, this is a great first project. Now we're gonna assemble it under the canopy. It's a little cooler in here. So now we're gonna assemble. I bought this little base right here at Michael's for, I believe, $4.98 with a coupon 20% off. What is that? $4? <laughs> okay. And then of course our spindle and then our scrap piece of wood. So we got that, that. Then we'll put our mailbox on top here. You can kind of see. So we'll just set that aside for now. Like I said, I'm not really doing any measuring, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take this other piece of scrap lumber and we're going to just draw an X on all of the centers because we need everything to be centered. So if you go from corner to corner on your wood pieces and make an X corner to corner, that will find center on anything that's square. So we are going to do it on every piece that we're working with on the top and the bottom. Now we're gonna take a drill, and you've got a drill bit on it. So we've got a pilot hole right there. We're gonna do this on all of our pieces. Put something underneath it so it wouldn't drill into the table. Not that it matters, this table's trashed. So using a drill is also not scary. <laughs> So we can do this, right? We wanna put a little wood glue on the bottom of our spindle. This will just give it added security once it's dry. We don't wanna to go too crazy. We're gonna take our base. We're gonna screw this down. Just slowly. We're not, we're just trying to get it to poke through. So you can kind of see how that screw is just poking out a little bit. That will help us line it up. So then we've got our wood glue covered spindle and we are going to line that up. You can see it's lined up, and then we're gonna just screw it into place, and then we're gonna make sure that it's squared up. That's what the bottom will look like right there. Awesome, right? Look how sturdy that is already. This is kind of a flimsy metal. I just feel like it will be more stable if we put something underneath it and set it on like so. We need to drill a hole in the bottom of this. So we're gonna do the same thing we did on top is find center, drill a hole. Okay, it eventually did it. <laughs> we are going to take some wood glue. And we are going to try to assemble that. We might have to do it in stages here. Yeah, let's go outside. We'll do this one step at a time. So then we are going to set this on top. Actually, let's just kind of poke this through. All right, this is tricky. <laughs> This is a little trickier than I thought. <laughs> We're just gonna go with flow. This is kind of a tight fit in here. So we're gonna do this by hand. Get that lined up. Make sure it's in the pre-drilled hole. And then we are going to do this by hand, the good old fashioned way with a little elbow grease. And I think we just need to get it down. This is why it's a good pre-drill. All right, since we kind of let it sit for a minute, I'm gonna add a little bit more wood glue because that's probably dried. We're gonna still do it by hand for a second, but I'm just gonna get this through the hole, get it all squared up correctly, and we'll get it down a little bit, and then hopefully we can finish it off with the impact driver or drill, depending on what you're working with. Okay, let's see. Make sure it's all nice and lined up. That's what we do. We'll so as I was painstakingly 
twisting that Phillips head screwdriver over and over and over again. I just kept thinking to myself, this is why we have screwdrivers. This is why we have drills and impact drivers and all of these tools. So I don't have to do this very thing that I'm doing right now. And then my next thought was, I really need to get an attachment for my drill so I can just for this particular situation where I can get into those tight nooks and crannies. Anyways, we ended up getting the job done and we did get a little bit of an arm workout. So, I mean, you, you, there's that. <laughs> and then once we had that assembled, I just took out my spray paint and spray painted it in two coats of all black spray paint. Now this is something that you could totally customize for your decor. This is just the look that I was going for, but you could have left it the original color. It was not bad and just painted the lower portion. So after the spray paint was dry, I did want to bring out some of that embossed lettering that was on that metal mailbox and so I got out my gold rub and buff and I put a little bit on my finger and then I started kind of hitting the high points and <laughs> this did not go according to plan even though I didn't think that I had a lot on my fingertip I really had a ton <laughs> and it just goes to show you a little goes a long way in this one but so I just kept going with it I kept moving forward and progressing and then when I was done I was like <laughs> I have totally ruined this I think I need to just go check this in the trash <laughs> no I'm just kidding I knew that we could fix it um, I was not happy with how it looked and so what I ended up doing is kind of re-spray painting over the top of that again um, and letting that dry and then what I did is I got that same gold rub and buff I got kind of a stubby paintbrush put a little rub and buff on it just the tiniest amount and then like pretty much wiped off all of it that's what I felt like I like put some on and wiped it all off and then I very lightly kind of hit over the top of those lettering and that was exactly what it needed because it looked so much better and the finished version I just love it now we can embellish this with you know a little bit of Christmas greenery if we want leave it as is whatever and I cannot wait to get all of my Christmas decor out put it next to the Christmas tree so that my kids can do their little handwritten notes to Santa if you don't believe in Santa in my house then he doesn't come and visit you <laughs> Anyways, I'm just really happy with how this turned out. It was very affordable. The whole thing was probably under 20 bucks, which is pretty good for such a substantial piece of decor. I really love how we upgraded this Walmart piece and now it has become so much more of a statement piece. So for my next DIY, I'm using inspiration from an old DIY. These sit on my fireplace mantle. I love these so much. These were some DIYs that we patterned after some magnolia candlesticks. I have these Christmas trees. I've had them forever. I've used them a bunch. And some of them were getting kind of loose and they were falling out of their styrofoam. You can see here. What if we combined this with this. How cute would that be on my fireplace? I love it. <laughs> We're gonna use these as an inspiration. We are going to cut down two spindles just like we did with these ones. Let's start by going back to our miter saw and making a few simple cuts. So we've got these and the reason I have these is because we're gonna use them as kind of pattern. I'm gonna just kind of hold it up here. I'm gonna make a mark where I wanna approximately cut. So that's for that one. And then for this one, I'm able to actually make two out of this. So what I do is we're gonna cut off right about there. We're gonna cut off right about there, right about there. Okay, so those are our cuts. Super scientific, I know. We're gonna cut. Okay, so here we go and we're gonna just assemble them very similar to the mailbox that we did earlier. We're gonna just eyeball the center of this right there. 
We're gonna start with a smaller one and then we're gonna build up because we need it to be kind of big. Now we're gonna switch out and go larger. And we're gonna go even bigger. I know that's crazy, but I think we need a pretty large hole. So we've got a pretty large hole in there now. Let's try that out. Stick it down. You can see it doesn't go all the way down, but it's nice and tight. So I think I'll just cut off the bottom of that. So we have our candlestick bases with the hole, super easy. Now, if you wanna paint them like my original candlesticks, I've linked that in the description box below. I think that would look super cute. That is a really, really pretty look. However, I have very much committed to a black color scheme with my Christmas decor. So these are also gonna be spray painted out in that same black. Then we'll just go in and cut down the ends of these just a little bit, push them down into place. I don't even think we'll need to glue them just because they are in there nice and tight. Then that gives us options if we wanna switch things out. I think this is gonna look really cute on my mantle, especially when I've got it fully decorated with stockings and all of the greenery and garland that I'm gonna be adding. I cannot wait to see this in the finished format, but for now, they're looking pretty cute. What do you think? And if you choose to do this DIY, I would love to see how you interpret this. Go ahead and hit me up over on the DIY Niners Facebook group with your photos. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay, so it seems like I always have to do some kind of cutting board. I love cutting board. This actually kind of started from one that I made at Easter where I did a bunny shaped faux cutting board. I just made it out of scrap wood. I wanted to make one that, that was food safe and meant to be used as an actual cutting board. So what I did is I went to Home Goods and found one. So what we're gonna do is I've created another free printable and all of my free printable links will be in the description box below. We are going to trace this on with that graphite paper that we used earlier and trace it onto our cutting board with the graphite paper. If you have been nervous to use power tools, this is an excellent first project to do. So for this one, we'll take you outside. We're about to get powerful. We are gonna use a jigsaw. It's the first saw that I ever worked with. Once you get outside yourself and get over the fear, it's really easy to work with. We're gonna start by cutting the star first because it's kind of small and we need it to be kind of clamped down into place. We don't wanna be working with small areas. So we're gonna do that first. Then we're gonna cut out the tree. And then we'll maybe sand up the edges a little bit. Now with our the wood pieces cut out, we're gonna drill a hole in the top of the tree. My cutting board came with a little leather strap that we're gonna cut down a little bit and tie the star to a tree and kind of have it be like a little decorative embellishment. I kind of liked the idea of a little dangly star on it and I thought that would be fun. And so we'll touch that now. Then I just took a little cold coffee and went over the freshly cut edges on the cutting board with that to finish it off. And then... Now back in the fall, I created this little arm to hold this hanging sign. If you wanna see that episode, I will link it below so you can kind of get the tutorial on how I did that. It was really cute. And then I hung this round pumpkin patch sign from this little hanging arm. 
I don't know what to call it. Anyways, I always knew that I wanted to flip it around and do something else on the back. So that's what we're gonna do. I decide to do a reverse stencil. So what we do is we just go ahead and weed everything off that we're not gonna use and leave the words in vinyl, okay? And then we are gonna take our wood round that I previously stained in an antiquing wax on the back there. So that was already done in the previous episode. If you were starting afresh, you would want to do some kind of stain. Uh, I like to use the antiquing glaze because it dries really quickly and it gives it a nice color. Then we apply transfer tape and peel off the backing and put that on our circle where we want it to be located and then rub that into place. Now I used removable vinyl and removable vinyl is notorious for not wanting to stick to wood. So you could go ahead and use a permanent vinyl. It will peel off after the fact, but I was able to get this removable vinyl to stick down with a little coaxing. <laughs> And then I took some chalk paint in the color plaster, which is kind of like an ivory color. And then I very carefully just did a coat of that. And it was kind of a thick coat. And once it was fully dry, I peeled back our lettering and that kind of acted as a reverse stencil. So what is exposed is if the words are in the wood tone and then everything else is in a white or an ivory color. <laughs> and then I went back in and kind of sanded it all down, distressed it a little bit around the edges and that was it. I went ahead and hung it back on that little hanging arm thing that I created and to give it a kind of a Christmas flare. I put some Christmas greenery and just kind of twist tied that onto the hanging arm and it gives that, that Christmas flare. But once Christmas is over, this is a sign that I could feel good about hanging up all year round. I do think that joy is something that you choose. I know sometimes we don't often get to choose our circumstances, but we can choose how we respond to it. And I'm gonna need this reminder coming up in, in a DIY here real soon. But no matter what's going on in our lives, that we can choose joy. Next up, we are going to make a joy tray. We are gonna use this clear tray that I ordered off of Amazon. They are plastic acrylic. They're nice quality though. So what I did here is I went into Cricut Design Studio, made a rectangle in the dimensions of this tray. And then I just typed out the word joy. And this time I used Halloween Dream Script and then I went ahead and made it really big. I kind of tilted it off kilter just a touch and then I unlocked it and I kind of stretched it out to fill in that area and you just place it how you like it this time because of what we're doing you're going to want to hit mirror the image and so it's reversed and you'll see why that's important in just a second and then you can slice it into a stencil and then you go ahead and cut it out on your Cricut. I used my Cricut Maker 3 and it cut it out in no time flat and then of course we went back in and weed it. Put on our transfer tape And then we're gonna apply our stencil to the back part of the tray, not the front, the back. And you'll know because of the way it sits. <laughs> and this is why it's important to put it on reverse because we're gonna be putting it on the underneath side. And then we're gonna tape off all of the extra stuff with painter's tape because it was kind of a lift. I just didn't go ahead and cut it in vinyl. I just used some painter's tape to make sure it was fully covered. Then I took it outside and used my favorite 18 karat gold spray paint. And I did a couple of coats of that and let that fully dry. When it was fully dry, I removed the tape and I removed the stencil and we were left with a joy. Now you could leave it just like this if you wanted, but what I chose to do is do two coats of white paint over the top of that and let that fully dry. And then to give it a little added protection, I went ahead and did two coats of a clear uh, polyacrylic 
clear coat as well. And you wanna make sure it's crystal clear. We don't any, want any yellowing to happen. And then when it's fully dry, you are left with the most adorable tray that says joy. Now you could alter the colors how you want. You could do a black backdrop. You could do a green backdrop. You could switch out the coloring of the letters. But isn't that such a cute tray? You could use it as serving tray for your holiday get togethers. You could fill it up with goodies and give it as a gift. It is washable by hand. I don't know that I would scrub very hard with it, but just, you know, a nice wet washcloth, wipe it down with soap and water. You should be okay and quickly dry it off. Isn't that such a cute tray? Next DIY, I went outside and hit up my scrap pile and I found a piece. I didn't even need to cut it, it was awesome. So what I did is I first painted out the whole entire thing in white chalk paint, make sure it was really well covered all around the edges and let that dry. And while it was drying, I went into Cricut Design Studio and literally just put in the letters J and Y and I did those in aerial font in bold setting. And then I think I made them about nine inches by nine inches, give or take. <laughs> and then I went over to my Cricut Maker 3, put in some red vinyl. It's matteless and it cuts it so easy. You don't even need a mat, right? And it cut it out within like under like 15 seconds. It was so fast. And then I just cut it off and then I came over and weeded out the excess and then put some transfer tape on those two letters and then I cut them apart. Before we put them on, I sanded off the edges of our wood piece and kind of distressed it a little bit not not nothing crazy <laughs> and then i wiped that down now you'll notice that there is no O. okay and the reason why that is is because we are going to be using a mini wreath that i picked up in target dollar spot for three dollars and i place that right in the center and then i lay out my j and my y and that is it. But before we use it and hang it up, we need to make sure we have a way for the wreath to be attached. So I just took a screw and screwed it right into the wood. It was soft. I didn't need to pre-drill anything at all. And so it went in super easy. And I actually kind of found a little loop and it made that wreath nice and secure. That's it. So for scrap wood, a little vinyl and a $3 wreath for like less than $5, we have such a cute, decorative piece for the Christmas season. This would make a great gift, wouldn't it? So for this next DIY that is joy-filled, things didn't go exactly according to plan. I had this idea that I wanted to put joy to the world and make a sign out of it with some lyrics behind it. I had this frame that I bought on clearance at Hobby Lobby. And so I went out to my scrap pile and found a piece of wood that I thought would work. I kind of cut it down to size. The first thing that I did was paint it all out white and I let that dry. Then I went into Cricut Design Studio. I put the dimensions of a rectangle the size of my project. I love doing that as like a canvas so that you know kind of what you're working with space-wise and it works out really nice. And so I went in and I put in some text, uh, joy to the world. I believed I used Arial font and the, I used the first verse of joy to the world. I probably should have left it at that, but hold on with me. <laughs> then I went into their image section and I found joy to the world image that I ended up using. I liked it. Joy was really big and then to the world was in a really pretty font and I liked that. And so I placed that over the top of my first verse and then I kind of let it sit for a second before I made it and then I got thinking about it and I decided to do all of the lyrics. <laughs> so I went back in and put in all of the lyrics behind it before I cut it. Now that took a while to cut all of the all four verses and joy to the world on the, even my Cricut Maker, which cuts faster, my Cricut Maker 3. And so finally it ended up finish cutting and then I went to town weeding this thing and boy was that 
kind of a tedious task. So I kind of started and then I would go watch a movie with my husband while I was like weeding it. <laughs> and it took a while, I would say. And then finally I was done weeding it. Now it was time to put some transfer tape on. And I kind of had run out of my Cricut transfer tape. So I ended up just using some um, clear shelf liner right here because I had the right size of that. Well, it didn't really want to stick. So when I was peeling it off, I, it literally took me probably like 30 to 45 minutes to painstakingly peel that off because it didn't really want to stick to it. And oh my goodness, it, and it got worse from there. <laughs> so I finally get it peeled off and I get it applied to my sign. And I decided that I was gonna make it as a stencil. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it was a stencil because I really like the look of painted on items and that way you can also customize the color to match what you're doing. Before I ever add any color to it, I do a white coat over the whole top of it to kind of prevent bleeding because when it bleeds, it bleeds the original color that's underneath and then it seals all of the edges. And then I decided to paint it in the celery green that a lot of my other Christmas decor is painted in. That way it all coordinates together. And then I painted that over the top of the dried white. Okay, this is where it gets really crazy. When I went to peel it back, just imagine all of those little teeny tiny letters. It did not want to pull up in one fell swoop. Oh no. Oh no, it broke into a million pieces and I had to like little by little, piece by piece, peel off this stencil that was painted down. And at this point I was like, oh my word, where is the joy? Where is the joy? And I was thinking, well, this is a really good metaphor for life. <laughs> in the thick of it we're like working way tediously and we're not seeing the joy we're not getting the satisfaction and we're like what have I gotten myself into well I pressed forward because I was bound and determined to get the job done and I ultimately did peel off all of the stencil but it was a job and then to kind of just smooth it all out because it was a little rough you know for me poking it with my weeding tool uh, i took a like a little abrasive um pad not sandpaper but just kind of went over the top of that to kind of smooth everything out and it did look a little bit better then i wanted to see how the frame looked with this because I, I didn't know if i was going to stain the frame or if i was going to leave it kind of in a natural state after seeing it i did go ahead and put some antiquing wax on the frame and then we flipped it all over and I used a staple gun to kind of staple it down into place and got the sign done and then whew, the payoff and there came the joy and then I knew like all of that hard work all of that tedious doing was totally worth it because I love the sign. It's beautiful. And when I look at it, I do feel joy. <laughs> but I will say, having done this project now, I probably should have just stuck with the vinyl and maybe even just stuck with the first verse behind it. I think it would have also been very beautiful and saved myself hours of tedious labor. <laughs> <laughs> and stress. But again, I did find joy in the journey along the way. This is my wreath that I've had for several years that sits on my front door. Well, I found this really pretty ornament at Hobby Lobby, ready to go. It already says joy on it. And my thought was, is that we could just hot glue some pipe cleaners to the back of this and just twist tie this to our wreath and that's it and then just kind of upgrades it slightly and kind of gives it a fresh new look because i've had this for years i still love it but i think just adding that little joy or ornament in and it's not there permanently just is a fun little touch and super easy to do 
I knew I wanted to hang stockings, but I did not want to clutter the whole thing up with either stocking hangers or put a whole bunch of holes in my beautiful new mantle. So what do you do? <laughs> and as an added bonus, this will work if you don't have a fireplace mantle, but have a console or a shelf or something else that you don't want to put screw holes in as well. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find two stocking holders that kind of curl over and can act as a brace for a curtain rod. So I did this last year where you just slide kind of a skinny curtain rod through these two stocking holders on either end of the piece that you're using, whether that's a mantle or a shelf or whatnot. You put them on either end, slide the curtain rod through, then you can stack them up with as many stockings as you want without making any kind of holes. This is such an amazing hack, super easy to do. And it's beautiful too. So don't you think this looks good on my mantle? What do you think? This is a good skill to have because garlands are kind of expensive and this is a way to kind of get a Christmas garland for free. Yes, free. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go foraging in my little Florida neighborhood here for Christmas greenery. All right, so I'm in like way back in my community where they haven't really even begun to build houses yet. I've spotted some stuff that I think might work. I'm a little nervous that I've worn the wrong shoes. I'm wearing flip-flops, which is my standard issue. There are snakes. I don't know if there's any snakes here. We're gonna be careful and quick. <laughs> We didn't get caught. <laughs> now, if I can forage Christmas greenery in Florida, I'm pretty sure that you can find some near you. But if not, wait for the Christmas tree lots to open. A lot of times they will cut off like the bottom of the Christmas tree and have a lot of cutoffs. Sometimes they give those away for free. So you're gonna now meet me outside and I'm gonna show you how to easily make a garland. It is a lot easier than you might think. So let's go do a garland. So we've gone foraging through my neighborhood, found some greenery. It's a little sparse, <laughs> but that's okay. I, I don't need to show you like a big long one. You'll get the idea. And we've got the DIY dolly. She's gonna assist us with this. She's really gonna be running around in the background, but she just wanted to, <laughs> she wanted to say hi, but now she wants to go play. So you're gonna need an assortment of, of greenery. I've gotten everything by foraging. So the, the thing that I struggled with was berries and I really think that the berries will look really good in our garland. So I've thought about using these and the jury's still out. I may put these in. I got these at the Dollar Tree. They look very faux. Or I ended up buying at my grocery store some hypericum berries. I use these all the time in florals. I think they are so beautiful. I think that they could add kind of like that berry twist. They kind of remind me of cranberries. So I think that that would look really beautiful in our garland. The other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need some twine. You want to cut this twine to however long you want your garland to. So I may not cut mine off until down the road. So we'll just start with this end. And then you're also going to need some wire that's kind of like on a roll and not just a segment. One that can go for a while because this is how we are going to assemble our garland. Sorry, sorry. Oh, hey, no, 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 no. Okay, well that was exciting. Back to regular scheduled program. So we're gonna have our twine and our wire and we're gonna have it laid out. Now we're gonna start assembling our garland and it's a little windy here, so hopefully things don't go flying. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create bundles. And so that's kind of why I've got this assembly line because we are gonna take little pieces and we're gonna create some bundles. Let's do the berries last. So I took some of the long kind of pine needles with some of the cedar. We can put in some of this kind of softer pine. I'm not native to Florida, so I don't know all of the technical names for a lot of these greeneries. And then of course, magnolia leaves, I think look beautiful in Christmas arrangements. So we've got a few different types of greenery. These are just like some seed pods from my front tree out front. I liked it because it was a little bit darker and it added a different texture. And then we can take some of our hypericum berry and I'll put that kind of on top. And then we don't need any of this excess on the bottom. So we'll just kind of rip those off. So then once we feel like we've got a bundle like we like, we're going to start by wrapping this wire around. One, two, 
three times or so. And then we are gonna take the end of our twine and we are going to attach that. See, and you can do actually thicker twine than this. This is just what I had on hand. And then we are going to wrap it snugly around that rope. One, two, three. So we've got bundle number one. We've got some of these that are a little bit long or kind of in the way. We can just clip those off. And then we'll just keep creating bundles. So we've got another bundle and we haven't wrapped it with twine yet because we can just kind of place this along our rope, leave the rope where it is. We're not gonna do anything with the rope. It just is there to kind of hold it all together. So then we're gonna wrap this around three times pretty snugly. And if you wanna do it four times for a good measure. And then we just keep repeating this process and this is how we are going to Create our garland is just creating several bundles. We're gonna line it up with our twine, kind of angle it the direction that we want. One, two, three. You want it to be kind of what determines where everything's placed. Here's what we've got so far. Very pretty. I really do think it would look better with more traditional Christmas tree type green. So just keep that in mind. But you can keep this process going for as long as you want and make it super long. I'm gonna show you how to finish this off. You could just put a beautiful bow on the end and maybe like hang it downward and a garland like that. Or what we're gonna do is we are gonna build one last bundle if I don't like knock everything off here. We've got our one last bundle here and we are gonna attach it to the end in the opposite direction and there will be a hole. So just be aware of that and we will fill in that hole. So we're just gonna wrap that on one, two, three, very snugly, maybe even a fourth. And we're not gonna snip the wire yet because as you can see, we've got this kind of weird thing going on here. And the way we're gonna fix that is just wiring in individual pieces until we are happy with the look. So we'll put in some more of this greenery kind of in different directions, wrapping it around. We don't wanna get too crazy and make it like weird thick but we do want to fill in that hole. So just keep working on it until it feels nice. And honestly, if you needed to break out your hot glue gun, wouldn't be the end of the world. <laughs> but I think we can get the job done with just wiring things. And then when you are happy with it, cut off a little extra. We're now detached from our wire and then just kind of wind that through. And there you go. And then, of course, make sure you cut off your twine. There you go. And our garland's not very long, but it will look great on my dining room table. So here is our beautiful, mostly foraged, garland that we made ourselves, super easy. If you're in need of a really cute centerpiece, but you don't have a lot of time, or maybe you don't have a lot of floral arranging experience, but you still want something that's cute and festive, this next hack is for you. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take some more of those cranberries and some Christmas greens, or if you don't have access to Christmas greens, you could use some rosemary. You are gonna take a little vase or a large one, depending on like how big you wanna do it. You could really make a good sized one. You're gonna fill it up with water, put in some more of those cranberries and Christmas greenery, whatever that looks like for you. There's a lot of flexibility in this hack. And then you're gonna stick in some floating candles. Then light them 
and it gives such a beautiful ambiance and a beautiful centerpiece for your holiday party or display. It's a really nice vibe. It's such an easy thing, so beautiful, so easy, and pretty much no skill required. We are going to be making a poinsettia napkin ring out of a shower curtain ring from Dollar Tree. These are gonna be super cheap, super easy to put together. So in this case, all you're gonna do is take one of those crystal clear shower rings that you can get from Dollar Tree and you're gonna glue the poinsettia of your choice to the top of it. And that's it, you can call it a day here. Or you could upgrade it just a little bit by first wrapping around some greenery garland that you can also pick up at the Dollar Tree. It's like the little green twist ties. I'm just gonna wrap it all the way around and then attach your poinsettia to the top with some hot glue. And then you can even add some little embellishments with some glittery berries or other berries. And this hack is really great because you could use it any time of year. And then these end up being, you know, anywhere from 35 cents to 50 cents a napkin ring and it really adds a really pretty touch to your holiday table. going to be doing a Christmas tree box. The first thing we're going to do on this Christmas tree box is remove the hardware and then we are going to do two coats of white chalk paint as a preparation for our next step which is I created this printable. I will link it for you to use for free. Right now it's a ledger sized document and it's reversed. You need it to be reversed for this process and then I've also provided another one of a French stripe and you'll see why in just a second. Now after our paint dries, then we're going to take our picture. We are going to cut it down to size so that it fits right on top of our box. And then we are going to apply a thick coat of this Liquitex matte gel medium. Not too heavy, not too thick, but just right. <laughs> and then we are going to put our image face down on it, kind of very carefully smoothing out any air bubbles. And then we are going to take our stripes and do the same thing to, and match up the stripe of our top piece and wrap that on the front and the back of the box. Now, some of you might be asking why I just didn't paint the French stripe on. I just kind of wanted to see how this would work. You could totally paint on the, the French stripe if you wanted to, but I figured if this works, this would be a really cool technique. Then we let that dry at least two hours. I let mine dry overnight. And then once it's fully dry, we are going to take a bowl of water and a soft cloth and just really saturate the paper. Then you kind of start to rub it and, and it will kind of ball up and it will be a total mess at this point. It'll be like, what have I gotten myself into? But just be patient with the process. Don't get too aggressive in areas where I got a little bit too over eager you pull off a little bit more of that image where you can be patient and very careful you leave more of the image and this is what we ended up with at the end and then once it's dry you may want to run your hand over it again and some of those extra fibers will kind of work their way off now at this point I kind of wanted to blend out some of the seams of where the matte gel medium had been and so I just went ahead and very lightly sanded across the entire thing and around the edges of the box very ever so slightly distress this. And after we have all kind of evened out and smoothed out, then I went back in with this Waverly clear matte varnish and varnished it all out. And that helps resaturate the colors a bit and protect it from any more distressing and gives it a nice finish. And then of course we reattached our hardware and here we have a Christmas box that is so beautiful with the French script, the Christmas tree, all of this. I think this would look great out all winter. It's not necessarily Christmas specific, so you could leave it out all winter long and it would look so beautiful. I love how this turned out, but what do you think? 
we are going to be doing a kind of topiary Christmas tree using a tomato cage that I found at the thrift store. I found this tomato cage for $6.99. It already had Christmas lights on it. It looked like it had some other stuff on it at one point, but it had been stripped down and it was kind of in rough shape. But this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. So all we're going to do is I took it outside and I started wrapping it like crazy in some Dollar Tree garland. It's very cheap. Well, it's a dollar. <laughs> and I just kept going around and I realized how fast it was eating up the garland. So I kind of went back and kind of stretched it out a little bit better. I used up what I had and then I continued on with several different other kinds of garlands that I had. Some of them were from Walmart, the kind of the $3 garland from Walmart. It's a little bit um, thicker and bulkier than the Dollar Tree stuff. And then I got a couple of really nice garlands that were maybe like $7 from Walmart. So it was an assortment of those three garlands. And I just kept spiraling around the tree. And then I realized that I needed some more. So I went back and cut some more. And then I finished out this tomato cage Christmas tree. I added some extra Christmas lights that I had in my stash. I think it turned out really cute. I pulled out a topiary in my bedroom. And so I'm gonna keep this displayed as a little Christmas tree in my bedroom. And you can see kind of in the background here that I've done a little Christmas spirit here in my bedroom. I love this Christmas tree in here. I think it turned out great. And all it needed was a little garland. I mean, how easy is that? I found this kind of rustic looking star on a stand and it had a light in it and I, I didn't quite know what it was supposed to be and I didn't know quite what I was going to do with it. Here's what I came up with. The first thing I did is I took a piece of scrap wood that was approximately 12 inches long and about nine inches tall. I didn't have to cut it down. It was already in my scrap stash. I just took a little wood glue and nailed it on and then we were good to go with the next step which is I initially thought that I might spray it out all white and with spray paint, but it was really sucking up the wood and I knew that it would need something a lot thicker. So I just chucked this up as a primer. <laughs> And then I did two very thick coats of white chalk paint and let that fully dry. Now, while that was drying, I cut out a Oh Holy Night and a Nativity Manger scene um, out of some permanent vinyl. And you'll see here that it was a little tricky kind of getting it off. For this type of vinyl, you really need to use a strong grip transfer tape. I didn't have it. I just had it the regular kind. So it was a little tricky getting it off, but we did eventually get it on and it was so beautiful. I loved the gold accent to it. But then I just felt like it was kind of unfinished and there was that little box around the base. So I just hot glued some floral foam in and then I just took some bushes of greenery that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's frosted, it's beautiful. Their, their Christmas greenery right now is so pretty at the Dollar Tree. I am super impressed with what they've got this year. And that's saying a lot because I'm not the biggest Dollar Tree DIYer. That's no shaming to anybody else. That's just my my, my personal thing, but they've really upped their game at Dollar Tree on their florals. I am super impressed. Then we reattached the light and that's it. And this really primitive looking, shabby looking star got a new lease on life and is a very glam, high-end looking nativity manger scene that I think is really cute. Holidays and cheer. What do you think? I found this really adorable, cute little mailbox. It was galvanized still and it had kind of a red flag on it. And I knew that we could maybe make a smaller version with this one. And so what I did is I took another thrifted item that we picked up on our trip, which is a candlestick, totally wild color scheme. It didn't really matter. I started out by chalk painting that candlestick in two coats of their crimson red chalk paint. And then it didn't really match the color of red that was on the little flag. Then I got bright red acrylic paint and did a couple of coats of that. And then it ended up being very close to the same color. But the finish was very flat. So I took this triple thick coat kind of a varnish finish and I did a very thick coat of that on the outside 
and it says not to work it too much and it, that is true. You kind of want to get it on nice and even right away and don't muss and fuss with it too much. So then we're going to let that dry. Then I cut out on my Cricut machine some vinyl lettering again that said letters to Santa. I kind of just designed this image in there. I kind of did it layered with the green and the red and then I also did a ho 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 vinyl as well and I attached the letters to Santa on the front of the mailbox and then I put the ho 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 on the side where it near the flag. I thought that was super cute and then we need to attach it so I took some of my clear Gorilla Glue, which is very heavy duty strength. And then I put a lot of that on the candlestick. And then I also put on some hot glue just for that instant stick because the Gorilla Glue takes a little bit longer to dry. And that's it. And now we have this really cute, very traditional Christmas looking letter to Santa mailbox that was very inexpensive, very easy to put together. And I love how this turned out. It's a tabletop one. It's a much smaller scale one than the last one we made, but it's super cute. What do you think? I found this beautiful table runner and it had these kind of cream wool snowflakes on it on this red and it just screamed Pottery Barn. I don't know where it originally came from, but it really had a Pottery Barn vibe. Well, on one side of it, one of the wool pieces was kind of stained and I thought even if we tried to clean that off, it probably would never fully get unstained. So what I decided to do is actually cut off one of the ends with a snowflake like on it and we are going to stuff in a pillow okay it fit in there perfectly this is just one that I had on hand and then I just folded it in on itself found some red thread matched it up with what was already there and stitched down the side and how easy is that? We have the most beautiful lumbar pillow. You can kind of see it in the background. It matches up with another lumbar pillow that I had from previous years that says joy on it. It also has a very Pottery Barn vibe as well. And then you can see my Pottery Barn knockoff sign in the background here. So it really ties this room together. I really love how this pillow turned out. What do you think? I found this gold base stand and then I also found a hurricane that kind of had like a little wreath around it. It was kind of a sorry looking wreath. <laughs> it was not very pretty. And then I found this beautiful box of vintage magnolias that were very Christmassy feeling and kind of sugared or snowed on if you will. I knew that I could really combine all three to make a very beautiful finished look. So the first thing that I did was I gave the glass hurricane a good cleaning. Then I clipped off all of the red berries that were in the little hurricane arrangement. Now I could have probably left them, but I really kind of wanted to have it like a glamorous a white and gold look. So I clipped out the berries and then I taped off the ri rim of the edge and I took some gold rub and buff and kind of very carefully rubbed that on the rim of our little hurricane glass. Then what I did is I sat our hurricane onto the gold plate that I found again, and then I tucked in those magnolia pieces in like the bare spots. And I didn't glue any of this in because I wanted to have the ability to take it apart and use it for something else if I wanted to down the road, so I didn't glue it in. I think it's fine. Then I went ahead and I took some more of that same kind of frosted Christmas greens that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and I cut off some some of those pieces and kind of tucked those in there. I also found this beautiful gold glittered berries at the Dollar Tree, clipped off some of those and tucked them in. And then I added a Dollar Tree battery operated candle. Now I have the most beautiful little arrangement. It could be really cute as a centerpiece on a table. I have it on my little nightstand here and I think it is just super elegant, super pretty. I love this. What do you think? Next up, I found this Merry Christmas stocking holder 
or at least that's what I assumed it was for. I'm not really sure, but that's what I'm gonna be using it for. It was a little rougher around the edges, but nothing is super crazy. Some of the lettering was bent and the color scheme didn't really work for what I wanted it for. So I did the best I could to kind of bend out some of those edges. And then I very carefully came in and taped everything off and I spray painted the star, the Merry Christmas and the base in this kind of pewter color and kind of gave it a fresh new look. And then that's it. How easy was that, right? We can use it to hang stockings. And, and this is a really great idea if you can find one of these in a thrift store. If you don't have a fireplace to hang your stockings from, you can find something like this and hang them from that. But super easy, super cute. What do you think? I found these gorgeous kind of bronze mercury glass candlesticks. And then I had some Christmas wreaths that I set on top of them and then some really fat battery operated candles that I set on top of that. Layering it up gives it a very Christmas or winter flare. You could definitely leave this up into January, February if you'd like. And it was so easy to put together. Keep that in mind. You could do this in the spring, in the fall. The same idea, same principle. Put a little wreath around it and you have a beautiful elevated look. What do you think? Our next Christmas DIY is this adorable t-shirt. Well, it's a pajama top. I'm using it as a pajama top. Isn't it cute? And what I did for this is I went on to Etsy and I surfed all of their designs for like Christmas tops, maybe Christmas PJ designs and things like that. And I came across this joy to the world and I loved it. I thought it was super cute, but on its own, it would be a little difficult to cut out. So I decided to put kind of a backdrop on it just to make it easier for us to apply to our t-shirt. Since this is a paid design, I will provide the link of the original for you to go purchase. But I think it's a really good idea to have some kind of border to put behind. Once you've got your design how you want it, you are going to print it out on your home printer. That's right, on your home printer using this special paper, you print it out and the colors are gonna look a little bit lighter than you thought initially. Don't worry too much about that because they do darken up with heat, so don't stress out. <laughs> and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out the outer rim on this. In my case, it was just this oval. Before I do this, I wanna let you know you can use a home iron for this product, which is wonderful, right? But I am gonna use my heat press it just makes it a little bit quicker and it presses it down really good but you are totally able to use a regular home iron with this product so no stress here so i just started out by preheating the fabric first then i peel off the backing of our image put that down then you want to put a piece of parchment paper or it does come with sheets of um, paper in there my dog got into it chewed it all up so we're using parchment paper and then you are going to want to press it for about 35 to 40 seconds. If you're using a heat press, I set this at 335 degrees. And that's it. Then you get a cute pajama top. You can pick the colors, you can pick the design, lots of flexibility in this. And that's it. How easy was that? Well, I thought, you know, if we're gonna have Christmas PJs, we might as well make them coordinate, right? So I found this coordinating heart design. They also had some really cute ones that said ho, 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 and some other things like that. And I thought it would be really cute to add that to the pant leg. You can see it right here, super cute. So all we did is use that same printable heat transfer vinyl and printed out our design, just adjusted it to the right size that we wanted it, which was about four and a half inches by four and a half inches. Printed it out, cut out around the edges and followed that same technique of preheating the fabric, peeling off the back and then placing it where we wanted it on the pant leg putting parchment paper over the top and pressing it at 335 degrees for 35 to 40 seconds, or just using your home iron on the hottest setting, no steam, just on a dry setting, okay? <laughs> and that's it. And then you have adorable matching jammy bottoms.
Okay, so now we've made our PJ top, we've made PJ bottoms, and then I thought we need some PJ socks. We are going to sublimate socks. Yes, Christmas socks. We all need some Christmas socks to keep our tootsies nice and warm during the cold winter months. Yes, it does even get a little chilly here in Florida. <laughs> so on this, I once again found a design on Etsy and I will link all of the Etsy designs in the description box below because I wanna make sure that those people get the credit, go there, buy the image, but, or you can find one that will work for you. But I found this Merry Christmas image with a little cheetah print that kind of tied the whole look together that we already have going. I just sized it down to, I believe it was just shy of three inches by three inches for these socks. Print out that image. You might want to print out a couple at a time. You know, if you can fit several on a sheet of paper and do several pairs of socks, why not? And then you just cut them out to size. And then we are going to go to my heat press. If you are sublimating, I would recommend using like a Cricut Easy Press or I'm going to be using a heat press machine, just a, a typical one here. And we pre-press the socks for about five seconds and then we are going to take our image, place them face down on the socks, make sure that they are the correct direction that you want them facing, whatever that is. And then we're going to take some heat tape and tape them into place just so that they don't move around because it will really mess it up if you do. And then we are going to put a piece of parchment paper over the top. It would be pretty difficult to put parchment paper in the inside of the sock and honestly the socks were thick enough that I didn't really think it needed it this time but typically you would want to put something underneath to prevent any kind of bleeding. And then we press it down at 400 degrees for about 40 seconds. And then we just sit and wait while the heat press does all the work. <laughs> and then when it's done, you lift it up, peel back the image, and you have the cutest socks that are custom. You could put your name on it. There's just so many possibilities with these socks, but I thought this would look cute. Now stick with me because I'm going to show you how we're going to assemble all of these things and put them into a Christmas Eve basket. So it is a Christmas family tradition for us to do, and probably a lot of people, <laughs> on Christmas Eve to do a Christmas movie marathon. We really love Elf. It's one of our favorites, but we also do a picnic under the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve. So I thought it would be really appropriate to sublimate a blanket. Did you know you could sublimate a blanket? And it's a soft, fuzzy fleece blanket. I got this one in white off of Amazon. And then I found this image on Etsy. It was super cute. It coordinated with everything we have going on again. It says, this is my a Christmas movie watching blanket. I was like, Am I gonna melt this? <laughs> This is gonna melt with all this heat, 400 degrees for 40 seconds. Surely this is gonna melt it. It doesn't, you are totally fine. So again, it's the same similar process. You're gonna wanna smooth out where you plan to sublimate, nice and smooth, preheat it. And I'm gonna just, because I was a little worried, I put down a piece of parchment paper while I was preheating it. <laughs> and then we lift it up. Then we are going to take this beautiful image that we found off of Etsy, flip it over, tape it down with that heat tape, put parchment paper underneath, parchment paper on top. And then we are going to press it at 400 degrees for about 40 seconds. And so this 40 seconds seemed extra long this time because I was like, I'm gonna melt this, I'm gonna melt this. <laughs> it didn't melt, but look at this amazing blanket. Is it not just the cutest? <laughs> I love it. And it's gonna look super cute in that Christmas Eve basket that we are putting together. What do you think? <laughs> do you think you could sublimate a blanket? Do you think you could even sublimate? Let me know in the comment section below. So we are back to our regular inkjet home printer. Now I've had some questions about these products by Hippo, if they are okay with a laser printer. Right now they are just for inkjet. And I think a lot of people have inkjet printers at home. So this is a really awesome product. This next product is my favorite. This is their water slide paper. Okay, so this is method number three, water slide paper. Now that we're in our cute PJs, we've got our cute socks with our cute blanket 
blanket. We are getting ready to watch a movie and we need some hot cocoa, of course, right? And so what we're gonna do is we are going to use some water slide paper to do some really cute mugs. So I went back to Etsy. Etsy's getting a lot of love and found a coordinating mama claws. And then I, while I was at it, I'm like, you know, I can make my hubby one too. So I made a Papa Claus <laughs> one as well. And I put that on our water slide paper. I sized it down. I believe it was about just shy of two and a half inches tall and about three to three and a half wide, whatever the image was. You just want to make sure it fits on your mug. And I got these white mugs last year at Dollar Tree. They probably still are selling them. And I just printed it out. Now this is the most important step in water slide paper and I'll show you why in just a second. You are going to want to take your water slide image outside and spray three coats of a, an acrylic clear coat. This is the one that I use. I'll link it in the description box below and you do three coats and let them fully dry. So I'd spray it on, wait 10 to 15 minutes, do another coat, wait another 10 to 15 minutes, do another coat, wait 10 to 15 minutes, then you're good to go. And that's, you know, it doesn't take you long. There's a lot of like downtime, but like as far as doing it, it's super easy. Then you're gonna just kind of cut around the edge or the design really close, cut it out, and you are going to dunk it into water. Now, I wanted to show you before I complete this, what happens if you don't do the three coats of the polyacrylic. What happens is the paper kind of turns to mush, all the ink bleeds out, and it's just a mess and it's not gonna work. It kind of like dissolves. But if you do the acrylic clear coat, you do not have this problem. What you do is you do the same thing. You put your image into the water, let it really saturate. It's anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds and then you, you kind of mess with it to see if it's going to slide around then you place your image with the back still on and intact where you want it to be and then you very carefully slide the back out it slides out so easy and then you just smooth out your little water slide image and let it dry and i am telling you doesn't this look so professional? And then of course I repeated this process with the Papa Claus one too. And then we have a really cute matching set of Papa and Mama Claus mugs or whatever you want because the world is your oyster with this product. It is awesome. I know I'm gonna get questions on this. So water slide paper is not dishwasher safe, but it is completely fine to wash by hand and it is also completely fine to microwave. So that's it for the mugs. But then I had one more quick little DIY since we are putting together kind of like a, a Christmas Eve basket, which is gonna have your jammies, your mug, your blanket, your socks, your everything you need for Christmas Eve movie night all in one little gift basket. I decided let's make a little custom tag. I kind of went ahead and designed this one and then it's the same thing. I actually printed it on the mama and papa claws because if you, you know you can maximize the use of this printable paper why not do it so I put it the tag on the same sheet of paper when it printed out and then did that same at the same time, because I was already doing the mugs, <laughs> sprayed it with that three coats of acrylic spray. And then again, before we applied it to what we were gonna do, I took this three by seven inch wood tag, which I got at Walmart, and I drilled a couple of holes in the corner uh, to so that we could tie it to the basket. And then I painted it in a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Then we're gonna take our water slide paper, which has been drying from the acrylic spray paint, and we are going to submerge it into water for that 10 to 30 seconds till it feels like it's gonna slide off. We're gonna place it where we want on our white tag, make sure it's lined up where we want, and then very carefully just slide out that backing, kind of dry it off, let it air dry all the way, and boom, you have a really cute tag to attach to a basket.
I got this basket. I believe it was at Ikea, but get whatever basket you want. You could have it with a cute liner or whatnot. I'm gonna just fill mine with some Christmas tissue paper. And then we're gonna place in our PJs and our socks and our mugs and our blanket all in there. Make it super cute. Just kind of zhuzh it up how you want. We're gonna tie on that tag that we just made. You might want to tuck in a couple of things of hot cocoa and we have a really cute basket to present on Christmas Eve. Now I made this one for myself <laughs> but I'll be making something like this for my family for Christmas Eve. Isn't it so cute? What do you think? We are gonna be making some Christmas tags. All you're gonna need is an inkjet printer and then I'm gonna provide a free printable for you. Looks like this. Isn't that super cute? It says something you want, something to something to wear, something to read, something you need. And then I just did three rows of it because if you wanted to do multiple sets, you might as well just use up all of that water slide paper all at once. Then you're gonna take the water slide paper, put it into your printer and print out this design onto it. And then we are going to go outside and you're gonna take some clear coat, it needs to be acrylic based, and spray three good coats. And then you're gonna let it fully dry for about 15 to 30 minutes. And then while it's drying, what I would recommend is I got these wood gift tags at Michael's. Um, I don't recall the price, but they weren't very expensive at all. And I just took some white craft paint and painted two coats of this white paint onto it and let that dry. So just get them white. I think that it makes the contrast really nice when you do that. So we're gonna just cut those down to size. And then here's the kind of where the water slide comes into effect. So we are going to dunk our tags into the water until it feels like it's gonna slip and that's about 15 to 30 seconds. And then we are going to take our tag, kind of line up the edge of where we want um, our it to set and then very carefully just kind of pull out that white piece of paper out from underneath and then it will kind of suction on to the wood tag. It was so cool. I loved it. I loved it so much. And then you just let it dry. I think you can speed up the process a little bit if you want to use like a hair dryer or anything but I just didn't want to mess around so I just let it dry now at this point you could also do another couple of clear coats if you want I didn't in this case I just left it as is but feel free to do some more clear coats to kind of protect it I love the shine of this I thought it looked really fantastic and then to kind of give it that Christmas flair because that's what we're going for I went ahead and took this red and white striped twine kind of fed it through and did a knot to make it into a tag. So then we have these really cute gift tags that look super adorable on a present. And just think of the possibilities. I mean, you could really customize them. You could put people's names and all you have to do is print it out on a printer, put a few coats of acrylic on it, let it dry, cut it out, dunk it in some water, and you have beautiful decor that looks just as good as vinyl. I mean, can't go wrong. And you just used your home printer. Okay, so for our next DIY, we are gonna be making like a cookies for Santa tray. Now I will also be providing a really awesome printable, it looks like this, except for it will be blank down here so you can kind of fill that in with whatever you want. And so I am going to provide this, this, all the links will be in that description box, I promise. All you need to do is print it out on that water slide paper once again, do three coats of that acrylic spray and let it dry. And while you're doing that, I found this a really cute picture at Walmart in their fall section. So then I just took some celery green chalk paint. And the reason I did that is because it really matches all of my Christmas decor. I'm gonna be bringing out a lot of that again and kind of adding to it. And so I just thought, let's keep it kind of all the same. So I just painted out that center part in the chalk paint and let that dry. Once both of our paper is dry and our ch chalk 
board paint is dry, then we can start assembling a tray. Now this one was kind of awkward. I probably should have gotten a different bowl, but it did end up working. I dunked the entire piece of paper into the water and then it probably took the full 30 seconds this time. And then I slid it onto our wood tray. Now I had sprayed this in kind of like a, a gloss acrylic and that's what I had. And then you could kind of see the, the flat matte from the chalk paint contrasting against kind of the gloss sheen of our sheet. So I didn't want that. So what I did is once our paper had dried, you want to make sure all of the water is gone. I took it outside and sprayed over over it in a matte finish clear coat. And I did several layers and I kind of went heavy around the edges where you could kind of see the outline. And then it kind of evened everything out and it all looked one. And I could not believe how professional it was looking at this point. I was so excited. And then I took some handles that I had in my stash and I used some Gorilla Glue to glue them on the sides. I also used a little bit of hot glue just for some instant stick. Honestly, if you can screw something in, it will be more sturdy. So, but, and then you want to make sure that that fully cures for 24 hours before you try handling it if you glue them on. But if you can find some that you can just screw on, then go that route. They have a lot of cute ones at Hobby Lobby. Again, that amazing hippo water slide paper is blowing my mind because this tray is so adorable. And then how it looks displayed with cookies, carrots, and some beverage drink. This product can give such an easy finish with virtually no painting. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Is this awesome? Are we liking this water slide paper? Again, another free printable, Merry and Bright. And what you're gonna need is two Dollar Tree frames. Uh, they come in gold already. I had one that was gold, one that wasn't. I just spray painted them both out into gold. And then you're just gonna print this out on the water slide paper. And then again, don't forget to do the three coats of acrylic spray, let that fully dry. And then once we do, we're gonna cut around the Merry and Bright, kind of following the shape of the scripty font. First, we're, I decided to go ahead and yank out the little things that hold in our glass pieces because I had a different plan. So I just pulled those out. And then on the glass portion of the frame, I went ahead and did our water sliding where we dunk it in the water and then slide it off. This one was felt like a little fragile just because of the way I had cut it. Just be gentle and ginger on this one where you kind of cut it around. But it, it worked out fantastic. And then what I did is I inserted the glass and then we went around the edges with hot glue to hold it in a place. I just didn't want those little tabs poking out and kind of ruin, ruining the aesthetic of our look. And that's it for like a little over two bucks. We have a really cute Merry and Bright sign. When you're looking at it, you cannot tell that it is a piece of like, I don't know what this technically is, like sticker paper or whatnot. You can't tell unless you're getting on an angle and getting really close up. It looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I'm totally obsessed with sublimation. It just gives such a professional look to your projects. So I wanted to do a little Santa sack and I've seen them around and I'm like, we can make one of these pretty simple. So what I did is I got some 65% polyester fabric, white fabric. All we did is took some hippo sublimation paper. I got this image off of design bundles. I will link the package that I bought. It had many to choose from and this is just one of them and I thought it was super cute. And so I printed it out in that large 13 by 19 inch size and you wanna make sure when you are printing, it is reversed. Now, if you want to learn about sublimation, you're gonna to wanna to go check out that video I did because I really break it down. In my video, you'll see just how easy it is to do, I promise you. <laughs> so go watch that one if you're interested in sublimation. But what you're gonna do is we print it out and then I laid it out just to kind of see where we needed to cut it and how it would look on the bag. Basically, it was, I cut it down where, where it was already folded and then I, I gave it a good iron. 
and then I sewed down the side seams. And then I also did a zigzag edge to kind of finish it off so there was no fraying. Then we left a little section at the top where we had kind of ironed down on our iron and created a little pocket. You can see it here what it looks like. It's folded and folded again and ironed down to make it easier. And before we stitch that, we're gonna also, we're gonna fold those little end pieces that we didn't sew. First, we're gonna clip it a little bit, fold it over, stitch it down the side, and then that will kind of finish off those edges. Then we're gonna roll it back down and stitch it across so that there's a little pocket and then you have a little sack. Before we put in our cord, we're gonna take it over to our heat press and we're gonna put some parchment paper on the inside of the sack and then press it down for five seconds. And then we're gonna lift it up and then we are going to take our sublimation reverse print, put it face down, and then we're gonna take some heat tape and kind of tape it into place so it doesn't move around. And then we're gonna take some parchment paper over the top of that. Then we're gonna press it down this is at 400 degrees for 45 seconds. And you could also use your easy press if you want. I am really liking this for sublimation. It's a little bit bigger coverage, so it works out great. And then you lift it up and you reveal our Santa sack. And isn't that cute? And then we're gonna just add some white cording. I put, attach a pin and kind of thread it through and then tie a knot on either side cut off the excess cord and that is it. So then you have a really cute sack. What do you think of this Santa sack? We are gonna be taking this white sublimation pillow blank. We're gonna print out our image which I'm gonna be giving away for free. This is one that I've designed, so it's all down on that same link. And we're gonna print it out on some sublimation paper, and then we're gonna do the same process we just did. He put something in the middle of the pillow, heat it up for five seconds, then take our image reverse, put it face down, a little tape, a little bit of parchment paper, press it for 45 seconds at 400 degrees. So if you have been sticking with me from the very beginning, I promised you all something for free. And with the spirit of it being a Christmas episode, I just thought I would give you a free printable. It says, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. So this printable, if you're interested, I will link in the description box below. It's my little gift for you for Christmas and just for supporting my channel. You print it off. This is a 16 by 20 print. I print mine off at Walgreens um, just because the price there is good, but you can print it off at Walmart, Costco, lots of different places, and the images for free. I won't be paying for your printing, sorry. <laughs> but hopefully you still like that. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.